The Sketch by Olga Sarakina. All rights reserved. Part 1. Theory. Chapter 1. Sketching. In which I explain what sketching is and how I came to do it and what is the main aim of this book. 1.1. What is sketching? Basically, it is about making a quick drawing, a study, which helps you to represent a design idea. And it has a plethora of applications. Travel sketching, or sometimes city urban sketching. Expressive, energetic and usually extremely fast drawings of architectural details, city views, restaurants, etc. It can be made both in open air, plein air in French, and working from your memory recollections of your trip when you are back at home, all using photos and creating compositions out of them. It includes cafe sketching as well, fashion sketching, people, fashion looks and accessories. It is used mainly for illustrations or magazines, i.g. for brand promotion. It helps designers during the first stages of creation of their collections and helps introducing changes. Industrial design sketching. Probably the most known and popular branch of sketching. Obviously, it was created by industrial designers. A good example is car sketching. In this case, all sketches are made with great speed and confidence. The type of sketching we are going to study here is a little different. We will start by creating a precise measured perspective with help of scale rulers. This will be followed by freehand rendering, which may take two to three hours. And for this stage, we will be using markers. Once you have mastered the construction technique, you will develop the ability to produce quick freehand sketches of interiors, which is the ultimate goal of the entire book. Sketching is an amazing skill which lets you to transfer your design idea onto paper in the most fun, fast and effective way. In other words, sketching is a unique instrument for visualizing your concepts. Nowadays, it is associated mostly with such media as specialized professional markers, for example, Copic, Stylefile, Chartpack, Promarker, Zig, etc. Actually, sketching palette is very wide and versatile. You can start from scratch by using a pencil, charcoal or black liner and end up by using different types of coloring techniques. For instance, watercolor, colored ink and pastel or watercolor pencils. It is possible to mix different media, for instance, markers plus pastel or watercolor plus colored pencils. There are so many creative opportunities for you to test and explore. It is a good idea to try several and pick a couple of favorites. A range of this kind of media in the art shops can impress and confuse at the same time. But don't worry, my friend, in the coming chapters I will recommend you a nice and compact set of marker colors, which I personally use most of the time. But why I do recommend markers? This is my answer. In my opinion, markers are the most easy to learn how to use and easy to implement technique for beginners, especially in comparison to watercolor. And at the same time, sketches done with markers usually look more vibrant. As a matter of fact, in my personal interior design practice, I used to use watercolor and colored pencils for my drawings, whereas now I opted for markers only because I simply see how much better they perform on paper for interior design purposes. The reason why sketching became so popular today among designers of all kinds, not only in Russia, Europe, USA, Asia and the rest of the world, is because artists nowadays tend to be overwhelmed by computer programs such as CAD, 3D Max and Maya. In the old days, artists were earning they are bred by literally their hands, and now they are desperately wishing to go back in time when ideas were transferred through hand drawing, which is far more natural and organic way of doing it. Just take a look at what is happening right now in our creative lives. We rarely, if ever, write with a pen, 
and mostly type on a computer, iPad or iPhone. We do not send handwritten letters and cards anymore. Epistolary genre is almost gone for good, and even our thoughts and ideas we capture notes or on our on our iPhones. It seems that we have forgotten the meaning of handmade, handcrafted, which is precious, because in creating it you include a piece of your heart, love and memories. Do you remember what we were told as children? The best present is the one that is made by hands. There is a profound meaning in that. Just observe that we no longer create on paper, but work on a computer, in Photoshop, Word or AutoCAD. The words we use, especially verbs, bear deep meaning. With that in mind, ask yourself, is it better to render or to hand render, to work or to create? They say that 3D Max was invented by those who cannot draw. Clearly, there is a number of advantages in using 3D and computer-generated imagery, but let us not lose the command of our hands and the link between the brain and the heart that hand drawing fosters. 1.2 Types of Sketching As I mentioned before, there are different types of sketching, and here I would like to talk about each one in a little bit more depth. Let's take a quick look at the main features of most popular of them by splitting them into key concepts and key words. Fashion sketching. For this type of sketching, it is important to have a good understanding of human proportions, face and body. You should know how to stylize figures in your drawings. More often than not, body proportions are elongated in fashion sketching. For example, the total height of human body in fashion sketching is 10, 11 or even 12 times the height of a human head as opposed to real-life proportions of only 7.5 to 8 heights of a human head. The most important aspect of fashion sketching is to be able to capture a design idea in the best possible light. Hence, a facial portrayal of a human figure is usually not important. In this case, it is critical to be able to deliver the idea of the design collection to the best advantage. In fashion sketching, it is important to bring the clothing design into focus and a lifelike portrayal of the figure is completely unimportant. You will also need to know how to convey through hand render the look and feel of such materials and textures as skin, hair, different types of fabric, metal, etc. Industrial sketching. You will need the ability to draw objects in 3D, clearly showing their structural design and volume. In order to be able to render a professionally looking arrangement of component part on a page, you will need firm grasp of the principles of composition. You will also need to perfect your technique and speed in order to develop a short line and confident hand. Most common materials that need rendering in industrial sketching are metal, plastic and glass. Travel sketching. In this type of sketching, the most important skill is to manage to convey the feel, the ambience of a place, to capture the fleeting moment and at the same time to deliver correct scale and proportions of the object. More often than not, you will also need to be able to perform at high speed, as you will be sketching while traveling, while on the road, when you do not have several hours at your disposal, the way it would have been the case with plein air sketching. In this type of sketching, it is important to grasp the intrinsic traits of the place you are observing and afterwards graphically stylize it in your drawing. Interior sketching. For this kind of sketching, it is highly important to understand the laws of perspective and train your eye to judge scale and proportion. It is always good to be able to execute your drawings within different time frames, because sometimes you will need to draw your idea quickly in front of your customer. As an interior designer, you should have an eye for beauty, a feeling for harmonious colors and a perfect palette. 
and as in other types of sketching you should be able to render a variety of materials such as fabric wood stone and glass 1.3 how i came to sketching in fact i have never parted ways with it drawings plein airs designs sketches outlines drafts all these have been my close companions all my life. Throughout my education, first at the Art School for Children Alexandrina, followed by four years at the Arts and Aesthetics School on the Fontanka River in St. Petersburg, and finally six years at the St. Petersburg Stiglitz State Academy of Art and Design. I was always drawing, perfecting my technique, honing on my skills and hand confidence. I have been studying sketching all my life and even now I'm continuing to refine my skills almost every day. Russian art academies provide solid foundations and exceptional old-school education, particularly in academic drawing. In Russia we are very proud of our cultural traditions and systematic in-depth comprehensive approach to the artistic education. Contemporary methods marketing and brand building are what I call complementary options, something that a designer can learn on his own using information on internet books or short courses. Technology is developing at a very fast pace, new teaching, teaching methodologies continue surfacing, but always remember that no skyscraper can be built without proper foundations, so the core skills must be solid and comprehensive. What are the core skills? These are the necessary skills, the understanding of the essence of the subject, acquisition of the faculty of fast learning. For interior design, for instance, it is important to know history of arts, design principles, ergonomics, material science, color theory, understanding of material, materials, perfect command of perspective and shadow projections and drawing techniques. If it is fashion design, we need to know surface anatomy, materials, stylization techniques, sewing basics and pattern cutting, etc. Interior sketching is one of the key components of a successful and productive design practice. Masterful comment of perspective, rendering and stylization are the three main skills that you will need to develop in order to be successful at it. In fact, the sketching practice boils down to to a certain sum of knowledge and skills which are essential to professionalism and expertise. Do not be put off if you have never held a pencil in your life. Sketching is a skill which is entirely possible to learn and improve upon. Always remember, if there is a will, there is a way. During my years at the Stiglitz State Academy of Art and Design, majority of our time was spent on disciplines such as architectural drawing, perspective, academic drawing, designing, modeling, composition and color theory. As you can see, the program was very intensive. That is why the course takes six years to complete. The sixth year being allocated to work on students' work diploma. In this book, I'm going to give you the absolute essence of the knowledge required to become a successful practitioner of interior sketching. I adore the aesthetics of freehand rendering. In my opinion, it is a much more natural, fluid and more vivid way of visual expression of an idea compared to a static, dead-looking 3D model that took a vast amount of your time and your nerves to produce. All painters and designers are in essence visual artists and we constantly work with images. That is why it is so important for designers to have the ability to create a desired image on paper by hand in a fast and efficient way to demonstrate an idea, an idea simply and effectively. Nothing captures your client's imagination than when you start drawing right before their eyes. My story. I was in my third year at the Art Academy when computer programs invaded our academic life. 
as young creatives, we were all completely fascinated by 3D Max, Photoshop, AutoCAD, and it seemed impossible to ignore them when we were preparing our projects. We were given some basic instructions of these software packages at the Academy, and then some of us kept studying these programs with the help of books and specialized courses. On the whole, a lot of time, effort and money were spent to master this software. Incidentally, many students were left dissatisfied when after having spent their money, they they felt they did not acquire profession command of the software. It is hardly surprising. This software suits a particular mindset that is characteristic not so much of an artist, but of a technical professional programmer. Have you noticed that, that most 3D Max professionals, visualizers and card operators are chiefly men? Perhaps it is because men are more technically minded. Over time, this program started to supersede hand rendering. During my last year at the academy, I was working on my diploma, and in parallel, I was freelancing as a designer for a prominent firm. I regret to admit that I found myself drawing less and less, increasingly becoming a manager of my project rather than a designer. I felt let down. I was questioning if my chosen profession was no longer the right thing for me. Luckily, I was well trained and I quickly rediscovered the link between my heart, my mind and my hand. And since then, I went on to uninstall all computer-assisted design software. Incidentally, most of my students come to me with this exact problem. Interestingly, most of my students are women. The fact that you are holding this book in your hands indicates that you are at the same crossroads. I am delighted to say that there is a way out, so let's get on and look at the profession on, of an interior designer. 1.4. Who is an interior designer? This is an important part and some of you may get upset when I dispel the myth that the interior design profession is about beauty and romantic appeal, but you better know the truth if you want to avoid a blind date disappointment. Interior design is not about pleasant meetings with customers in glamorous restaurants and elegant offices, reflecting on the subject of interior styles, choosing that ideal shade of taupe for the tall link in the bathroom, artistic inspiration and perpetual joy of creation. Well, some of it is, but it sums up no, to no more than 5% of the overall project scope. The rest of it is arduous daily routine. Designer supervision at a construction site, naked concrete walls, breathing all this cement dust hanging in the air, speaking to often rude builders, managing orders, chasing suppliers, generally putting out fires on a daily basis. To give a complete image, an interior designer is an all-around craftsman multi-armed, multi-legged and multi-brained. He bears in his mind plethora of diverse information. Starting with yesterday's conversation with the customer, requests from his wife, children and his dog, visits to a tile store, sanitary equipment showroom, lighting shop, reviewing a quotation and negotiating with construction supervisors, and rows about missed deadlines. One or other, one other aspect that is rarely mentioned is the futile struggle to foster a good taste in customers trying to persuade them that rhinestone and crimson velvet from a luxurious hotel and plaza looks like unabashed kitsch in the context of a city apartment. At the same time, you will need to find time and energy to visit a great many interior design exhibitions, many of which take place at least twice a year. 
in order to be well versed in new technologies and materials. As you can see, it is a very vibrant and eventful life. The most exhausting part of it all is relentless multitasking, and we now know that is that it is the least efficient way of getting things done and by far the most draining. At the same time, creativity was supposed to fit in all this somehow and be the essence of the designer's occupation, given that he is an artist, designer engineer, as it is inscribed in my diploma. The fact of life is, a designer is often a project manager, a director, an author, a supervisor, and a diplomat, all rolled into one. Of course, this definition also applies to any self-employed designer or an owner of a small design studio or a freelancer or any other professional who work for himself rather than a company. In the midst of the hustle and bustle, when you have this, that or the other place to rush to, dozens of appointments to keep panicking clients to come down and a builder to explain off these things to, your energy dissipates very quickly and your stamina very soon wanes. Days are slipping away imperceptibly and then almost nothing is done. Does that sound like the way things are sometimes in your case? Cheers! This means it is the right time for you to get away from it all, take it easy, recharge your batteries and discover a new way to spur your creativity and awaken your inspiration. In fact, this is exactly where sketching will help you. Concentrate on your creativity, on drawing, and you will see the progress straight away along with rapid professional growth. Being a creative person, a designer must always feel that he or she is constantly developing and growing professionally. I think it is of paramount importance to a designer or an architect the ability to express ideas on paper using just a pencil. Having graduated from the Arts Academy, I was astonished to find out that some designers were completely incapable of drawing and many of them have never ever even tried to, commenting that the main thing was the ability to use appropriate computer programs, uh, knowledge of building principles, regulations and materials. It is beyond doubt that it is highly important to be an expert of your craft, a professional in your field. And in real life, it is also vital to be good at maintaining relations with customers and construction workers and to have a leadership talent. You gain respect in your client's eyes when he or she sees a complex interior being artfully created by you and there is nothing that proves your professionalism and creativity further than if you're drawing a sketch right in front of the client during a meeting. It does the trick 100% of the time. Ask yourself, what is it precisely that I want to do? What is missing from a creative process? What would be my ideal creative process? If you are a computer geek, there is no problem. However, if you are perturbed by the feeling that something is missing, that you are disconnected from your work, that you no longer enjoy coming to the office and that everything became a routine, it means you need to discover a new way and acquire new knowledge and skills. You need to find a way to reintroduce elegance, spontaneity and joy back into your profession. Getting back to my story. At one point, I noticed that I had given up on drawing. Really, one not so fine days, I realized that I was almost perpetually seated in front of my computer, embroiled in a battle with 3D and AutoCAD, that all the time I was googling some sanitary wear, analyzing business proposals and quotations, and had completely given up on creative side of things. It just hit me. Did I spend six years at the best Russian art academy for nothing? What was the point of it all? 
Was it even worth it? And what about my talent, my artistic flair? I had a feeling I was betraying something fundamental within myself. And at that moment, I clearly saw that this was a problem that I had to address immediately. About the same time, I received a call from a friend of mine who asked me if I could give her a few interior drawing classes. Tanya, thank you! That's when it dawned on me that lots of designers felt the same way. A desperate lack of freehand drawing skills, which was a key creative component of their work, which was missing and that I was not the only one tormented by the problem of being constantly seated in front of a computer. That was how my interior sketching course came to life. Soon after, I started to give classes to individual designers from different cities and countries, offering them training on sketching and rendering. After that, I began to give classes to groups of students and my online courses were accompanied by live workshops in Moscow and my hometown St. Petersburg. At the present moment, as I am writing this book, I want to systematize a plethora of information on interior sketching that I am going to distill down to the essential knowledge, to the gist of it all, and represent the material in a clear, understandable, and exciting way. 1.5 Summary of the chapter The main message of this book is this. You can do professional sketching, period. <laughs> this is a new skill which can be learned and mastered with frequent practice. It is no different from learning a new language or a dance. You can excel at sketching even if you have never held a pencil in your hands. This is because interior sketching is 50% mathematics and 50% learnable techniques. In the next chapter, we will look at various techniques used by some of the best sketching artists, discover what they are and why they are so effective. My dear creative friend, thank you so much for listening to this chapter 1 on my YouTube channel. You can go and get a full version of my book The Sketch on Amazon.com and of course subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. Thanks so much!